How are things back in Abkhazia? Thanks to the full efforts of the workers, power was restored in just two days. Pretty impressive. Only the power plant is back online, though. Refinery itself will likely be out of service for months. Fuel sent from Supsa is being used to power the plant for now. Ah, just wish I could have stopped him. Impossible without a sniper. And in our focus on anti-cyborg combat, we were... unprepared. Thankfully, other than financial losses, few Abkhaz citizens were seriously affected. The plant workers had already been evacuated, and most were hired back on to rebuild the refinery. We received payment, and are not being blamed for the suicide blast. Good to hear. It should go a long way to help fix our reputation. Duh. And even more good news. Desperado is down one of its top captains. Let's hope they learned a lesson. We can hope, but it is doubtful. We still do not know who is supporting them. Even if we shut Desperado down entirely, their backers could simply hire some other PMC. Whoever it is, you really think they're interested in the pipeline? Who'd benefit besides the Georgians? Hmm, hard to say. Whatever the plan was, it went up in flames with Dolcaev's suicide. The problem is that there are countless companies and governments profiting off the BTC pipeline. Whoever is behind it, they may be too big for a simple security firm like us to do anything. Yeah, one thing we do know, though, is that Sundowner's more than just a pawn in all of this. We need to watch him. Trafficking or not, we need to stop their operation here. Find the evidence, and perhaps we can do that. And Tovarich, be careful. You know, I've never really developed a taste for climbing through sewers. And Guadalajara's aren't exactly wowing me either. This place isn't gonna go up in flames, right? I think I saw something about that in the briefing. You're talking about 1992? What a mess. Over 200 people killed. That was almost a half century ago, though. You smell anything off? Before the explosions, residents complained they smelled gas from the sewers. I'm in a sewer, Kev. You think I've got my smell receptors on? Local air analysis doesn't show anything potentially poisonous or explosive, though. Well, you ought to be fine then. Besides, a little gas explosion's probably not gonna kill someone like you. <laughs> well, that's very encouraging. Seriously, though, Guadalajara is not a bad place, at least from what I've seen. Oh, it's not. Second largest city in Mexico, after all. I've actually spent a lot of time down there. It's got a lot of charm. The architecture is a fusion of Latin and old colonial Spanish culture. The city's historic district is home to a massive cathedral overlooking the whole town. It's always bustling. It's a lot of fun just kicking back and watching the locals. Walking around the Libertad, taking in the sun with a cerveza in one hand, mariachi band nearby. No better way to spend a weekend, let me tell you. If this PMC thing doesn't work out, you'd make one hell of a tour guide. Meanwhile, I'm down in this dark, filthy, humid, cramped sewer. Also, if you ask me, the girls over there are the hottest in all of Mexico. You wouldn't believe some of the chicas I've chatted up. On the street, in the shopping malls, at the bars. Sounds like better company than a robo-wolf and a bunch of plague-ridden mice. <laughs> well, hang in there. I'll buy you a shot of tequila after we wrap this up. The city of tequila's not far, actually. That's where it originated. I'll take you up on that. Now let's get this over with. Hey, Kev, let me ask you something. What's up? We've been over pretty much all the... No, no. Those girls in Guadalajara, you never told me what happened. <laughs> Jeez, man, we're in the middle of a mission here. <laughs> so they used you for free drinks and then took off, I take it, huh? Well, they... they... they, they, they weren't really my type. I'm more of a... an intellectual, you know? I don't go for just any random girl at a bar. Looks are one thing, but I need someone I can talk to. Someone fun, but clever, with a good sense of humor. Yeah, that's what I thought. Look, Kev, you're in your 30s now. It's time to stop holding out for Lil Miss Perfect. You just need to find someone nice. You know, settle down, start a family. Okay, Mom. Okay. Laugh all you want, Kev, but having kids will change your life. I can't see him all the time, with work and all. But whenever I'm back home, he's always so excited to see me. When I see that, I feel like, you know, I want to do whatever I can to keep him happy. Sure, sure, I hear you. But look, man, I was just having some fun in Mexico. I wasn't seriously searching for a wife or anything. I know, but separate from that, I just think you've gotten too damn picky. 
I can understand trying to find the ideal woman when you're young, but you know what? It's those little imperfections, those idiosyncrasies that keep things interesting in the long run. You come to appreciate that kind of stuff in a lifetime relationship. Idiosyncrasies, huh? Like if she snores or she talks loud during movies? Well, not if she talks during movies. A man's got to have some standards. Say, hey, Raiden, where'd you get that hat you were wearing? The sombrero? Well, I picked it up at a souvenir store here. I guess I just kind of like the design. Also, when you're on a scout mission, it's vital that you use the local attire to blend into the background. Um, yeah. I think it looked pretty good on you. You looked like some kind of mariachi singer. Oh, you think so? Yep. Only, that's kind of a problem, too. How so? Well, I mean... That sombrero really is meant to be part of a mariachi costume. Mexicans don't wear hats like that normally. Come on. The guy at the shop told me I'd look just like a local. Yeah, a local tourist, maybe. Look, you might see a lot of Mexican men wearing sombreros during their daily routines, but, um, nothing like that. They'd go for something a lot more simple and compact. Something not all that different from cowboy hats in the Old West. Are you sure? I don't know if it's true or not, but I have heard one theory about the modern cowboy hat. They say it's based on the sombreros the original Western settlers brought from Mexico. Of course, cowboy hats come in all shapes and sizes, so you can't really say a specific one's THE cowboy hat. Huh. Well, now I know why the locals were so eager to get a look at me. That wasn't the hat. Raiden, can I ask you something? Sure. What is it? Just wondering, why'd you join Maverick in the first place? Ah. Uh, well, Boris and I go way back. Our first time working together was rescuing Sonny. That's Colonel Gerlukovich's granddaughter. He and Boris were good friends back in the USSR. Right, right. The Patriots were holding her? Yeah. I was mainly working with the PLA. But Boris was a huge help. His Russian military connections paid off big time. All his covert op experience, too. He wasn't working pro bono, of course, but he went above and beyond the call. The Patriots were a threat to everyone, not just America. He got that. And when Paradise Lost disbanded, he formed a new outfit and got them all work. Most of them, anyway, including me. Did you ever consider another line of work? Something non-military, I mean? I'm a cyborg, Courtney. What am I gonna do? Drive an ice cream truck? I can pass as normal from a distance. But up close, anyone can tell it's artificial skin. Good jobs aren't easy to come by these days. Even for non-cyborgs. And I've got a family to feed. Besides, I've been fighting my whole life. It's just who I am. Sorry, I didn't mean to pry. It's fine, Courtney. No worries. Uh, Wolf? You're a one-of-a-kind prototype, right? Correct. I was originally conceived as a weapon to replace humans and cyborgs. Conversation and intelligent decision-making were deemed essential to the role. The project was eventually cancelled after three years in development. Why? I have intelligence, but I lack a specific quality essential to any combatant. What's that? Brutality. I am not human, thus, I lack the brutality inherent to humanity. Hmm. I was shut down, then revived, apparently on Sundowner's orders. Sundowner? But what's he want with you? Unknown. A manifestation of his sense of humor, perhaps. As a machine, I am more sensitive to my fellow man than an actual fellow man. This amused him. <laughs> Guy has an odd sense of humor. Let me ask you something. What do you think you're doing here? I mean, why are you working with me? Because I choose to. I owe a debt, and I wish to repay it. A debt, huh? How human of you. I contest that statement. 
Many humans possess little or no sense of obligation at all. And many are entirely willing to trample their fellow man for personal gain. I know. But is that it? I mean, you're willing to follow me, put yourself at risk just because of that? What do you think of what I'm doing here, for example? A delicate question. I do find it difficult to rationalize your mission to rescue the children. If you wish to save children in need, there are hundreds of millions of others equally in need. <laughs> Thanks for the support. However, we must still uncover the full extent of Desperado's activities. And as such, it is meaningless to debate best practices without sufficient information. <laughs> All right, then. No more questions, Your Honor. Doc, they're VR training those kids' brains. Indeed, much as one might expect. Simply installing someone in a cyborg body does nothing to enhance their neural acuity. True combat efficacy requires the right knowledge and the right operant conditioning. Yeah, but this isn't just normal army training. This is the Sears program. Indeed, the instructor sends data directly into the brain. The experience is almost impossible to discern from real life. No, Doc. I'm not talking about the VR tech. The training program's completely different. It is only VR, right? They are not actually hurt. Well, right. That's because they don't have bodies to get hurt with. But they still feel pain. Without that, it just isn't realistic enough. That, and with this training, you're the one doing the killing. Not just the soldiers, innocent people, POWs, civilians. I... I see. So that is what the Sears program is. Yeah. Look, I... gotta move. Out. You know, Doc, if you're such a big believer in cyborgs, why haven't you made the jump yourself? An excellent question. There is one very good reason for this. And that is? Wait, wait. Is there some problem with the tech you didn't tell me about? No, no. No problem with the technology. The issue is I would be required to be separated from my original body before I could be transferred. And? So what? Well, then there's no way for me to oversee installation into my new body. You could have someone else do it. Ha! Amateur. Hacks. I would not trust the ever cybernetic surgeon to repair my toaster oven. I possess one of the world's foremost minds on this field, Raiden. This is not a boast, it is a fact. Entrusting that to someone less talented. Just imagine a great architect asking an infant to build his new home. No offense, but I mean you're just assembling some... Raiden, Raiden, Raiden. Raiden, this is not like putting together your bookshelf. It is quite literally brain surgery. More than that, in fact. There is an art to doing it correctly. <laughs> all right, Doc, all right. I hear you. Ah, I suppose I should not expect you to understand. Regardless, I am in fine health for now. Perhaps by the time my body begins to decline, there will be others that might be trusted with the duty. But which body to choose? Hmm, perhaps a young female frame to surprise all my colleagues. <laughs> to surprise your colleagues, right. What do we know about Armstrong? Plenty. Texas born and raised, played quarterback at UT. He was slated for the pros, but wound up joining the Navy after graduating. Said he wanted to serve his country instead. After that, moved to Colorado. Served in the state Senate before getting elected to federal office. But this can probably wait. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. By the way, Raiden, have you ever eaten nopalitos? They're typically called nopales. Huh. Oh, like that street vendor was selling. Nope. No pales. <laughs> well, that's too bad. You really ought to try some while you're in the area. Yeah, but it's from a cactus, right? Doesn't it taste all thin and watery? Not at all. It's kind of like the flesh of aloe vera leaves or the seaweed used in Japanese cooking. It's got this really soft but crunchy texture, and it's really versatile. You can eat nopales as is in a salad, uh, saute them, stir fry them with steak, put them in tacos. You can even toss them in a blender to make some juice. I... I had no idea. Tell me about it. I got hooked after Boris took me to this one Mexican restaurant. After that, I just had to learn more about them. 
Ooh, for example, they're really low in calories. They also have lots of soluble and insoluble fiber, which not only promotes digestion, but is great for maintaining healthy cholesterol and blood pressure levels. It's even thought to help prevent intestinal cancer. It's packed with healthy stuff too, like vitamins B and C, potassium, and iron. Okay, okay, I get it. It's good for you. So how does it taste? Huh? I just told you. Never mind. Probably can't capture any food down here anyway. Not that I'd need to. My muscles run on fuel cells, and I've got enough blood sugar to keep my brain running for another week. Well, you can still eat though, right? Yep. So, how about we all go out for Mexican once you're done? Food's a lot more than just an energy supply, you know? It's meant to be enjoyed. With that, I agree. You know much about Guyana, Courtney? Not really. I know the name, but don't ask me anything about what it's like. You mean you haven't even tried the food? Nope. No research trips this time. Besides, who knew we'd be running into any Guyanese here? I'm looking now, though. Looks like a lot of their diet is seafood. It's a small coastal nation, so it's probably easy to get fresh fish across the whole country. A lot of their dishes use Indian spices. That's where a lot of their immigrants come from. Fish with curry, huh? Sounds tasty. But, uh, maybe you could finish reading all about the food there after the mission. Huh? Oh, it, it just, you know, came up while I was reading up on Guyana in general. Right, right. Well, let me know if you find anything actually useful. It just popped up in the search results, I swear! What's up? No? Did you need anything else? No, guess not. Just wanted to hear the sound of your voice. Oh, save it for your wife, Raiden.